In the grip of a Donbass winter, Russian troops have been trying to hold the line. It's an artillery battle, especially so in the Luhansk area where this was shot, so speed is of the essence. It's really close from here to the enemy's position. That's why it's very important to quickly leave this place before the return fire. A couple of BMDs are getting ready to move to fighting positions. They will be 800 meters from the trenches of the Ukrainian nationalists. They will finish the task and come back. Of those on the receiving end and the bombardment of Ukrainian civilians, there is little coverage. But Russian reporting does give people at home some glimpses of what's happening at the front. And even a visit from the governor of this unit's hometown allows for some frank talk about what the soldiers are going through. The Ministry of Defence does everything. Guys have enough food, no problems with food. They have clothing, gear, and they're armed. Although there's enough of everyday problems with difficulties, difficulties with technological issues, we were discussing this today with the 348th Regiment. Of course we need to help guys so they have decent conditions. So viewers can get some sense of the reality of this fight, where the unblinking eye of drones so often precedes death by bombardment or tank attack. The soldiers you've been watching belong to a particular unit, the 331st Guards Parachute Regiment. And we've been watching them very closely for more than a year, scraping local and social media to tell the story of their war, their losses, and how the authorities in their hometown, Kostromar, are preparing people for the long war. Paratroopers from the 331st Guards Airborne Kostromar Regiment are on Red Square. Before the war, the 331st Regiment fancied itself as an elite. It took part in Red Square parades, held open days at its base in Kostromar and heard lavish praise from the generals. Currently there are best of the best in service, of all the units, of all the academies, of all the airborne forces. Being air mobile, the unit joined the invasion force very late flying in February 2022 from its base in Kostromar, 300 kilometers northeast of Moscow, to a training area in Belarus, from where it joined Vladimir Putin's ill-fated drive on Kiev. But late in March, the regiment joined the withdrawal back to Belarus after taking heavy casualties. During these early weeks, we could find only social media posts by local people mourning the fallen. Sidorsha, my most reliable, loving and caring husband, now you are in heaven, you will protect us from there. You will always live in our hearts and you will forever be a real hero to me. Nobody knows anything. The 331st Regiment is disappearing. Almost every day, photos of our Kostrama boys get published. It sends shivers down my spine. What's happening? When will this end? When will people stop dying? I'm lost for words. I can only cry. Kostroma has lost so many young men. What a tragedy. God, how many more death notifications shall we receive? Please have mercy on our boys. Help them survive. Return them back home to their wives and mothers. I'm begging you. Together with the 331st Guards Airborne Regiment, Edward took part in the peacekeeping mission in Kazakhstan, and then he was sent to Donbass. He died like a hero in September. But as time has gone on, an early news blackout gave way to media coverage of ceremonies designed to evoke the spirit of the Second World War. 
For example, at this school, they've unveiled a plaque to Eduard Reunov, a local paratrooper killed in September, evidently quite a character. Edik was groovy. He was always joking around. We had a school theatre production on New Year's Eve. It was based on evenings on a farm near Dikanka by Nikolai Gogol, a modern take with songs, and he played a devil. He was hilarious. But while that attempt to channel school memories may have seemed a little stilted, there have been more emotional responses too. This social media post shows a shell marked as if it was from Rayonov's classmates about to be fired back at the Ukrainians. Another is signed on behalf of his family, mother, father and sister. The death of the 331st Regiment's commander, Sergei Sukharev, inspired this illustrated novel treatment. Forward, attack! Ambushed by Ukrainian troops, with Russian vehicles being knocked out. Everybody leave the vehicle! Sukharev dismounted, urging his men forward, but falling in the process. If we stay here, they'll burn all our vehicles and kill all our guys. We can't go back. We're here to help our guys in the airport. We must go forwards. We must carry out the order. So, fighters, why are we taking cover? Who are we waiting for? Shall we show the enemy how Russian paratroopers fight? Hooray! Guys, follow me. Nobody but us. To Ukrainians who blamed Sukharev, for massacring hundreds of their troops in 2014, the Russian regiment's commander got no more than his just desserts. We got his uniform recently and Lorva says, is it for me? No, he says, I want the same one. I'll support his decision. I will be proud of him, just like I'm proud of his dad now. This is another unconventional approach. Wives and mothers of the Kostromar paratroopers photographed holding their uniforms, some speaking openly about their grief. I hope that the memory of my son and other guys will remain. Just like there are stories about the great patriotic war, I hope there will be stories written about our guys. And the losses have meant rebuilding the unit after each of its immersions in battle. Initially, in the early summer of 2022, they were near Belgorod, taking time out of the line. As the summer went on, the 331st Regiment did the whole tour, from a period near Izium in the early summer, then to the south, and finally as one of the airborne units that reinforced Kherson as the Ukrainians geared up to retake the city. During the summer, embedded Russian reporters occasionally gave a vivid flavour of its war. We were at the front line. The tank was firing. At first it was firing near us, then straight at us. We tracked this vehicle from the railway sidings in Belarus to the Donbass as the crew added markings to it, noting the regiment's distinctive inverted triangle with a three in it, signs used by different formations, and finally, the word Kostroma on the back to put matters beyond doubt. And just as experienced soldiers began running low, so these distinctive airborne armoured vehicles, called BMDs, were also being lost, or these ones left behind near Kherson when the Ukrainians took it. Work by open source analysts has identified at least two dozen BMDs belonging to the 331st Regiment destroyed in Ukraine during the past year. Many more will have been lost out of view from an original total that would have been over 100. So a new, more modern generation of BMD has been given to them, but as far as we can see from recent Russian coverage, in small numbers. Finally, in the wake of setbacks late last summer, the Kremlin ordered mobilization. A ceremonial dispatch of troops to the area of the Special Military Operation took place today on the 331st Parachute Regiment's parade ground. 
In Kastramar, they tried to take only men with prior service in the airborne forces. And while many Mobics, so-called, complained about cursory training, these were paraded to say they'd been well looked after. They've given us a lot of stuff. Knee pads, glasses, helmets, new bulletproof vests, new machine guns, winter boots. They're very warm. We're wearing them now. Everyone's freezing and we're hot. From the podium where the regiment was once told it was the best of the best, the governor wished the draftees luck. I'm wishing you good health, success, completion of all tasks, and that you return home, alive. This batch added perhaps 150 men to the regiment. But what about losses? Northeast of Kostromar lies a cemetery. And it's to here that coffins from the 331st and other local units have been taken. Now, we've managed to geolocate this cemetery, and you can see the entrance as well as the people selling flowers. This street view was taken before the start of the war. In April 2022, when we first compiled a list of the regiment's dead, it reached 39. By late June, it had climbed to 62. And now we believe that we can definitively say that at least 94 members of the 331st Regiment have been killed in Ukraine. Now, to that figure must be added those missing in action. Their bodies have never been recovered. And then, of course, other casualties, like the seriously wounded and those who've been taken prisoner. Они улыбались, как дети, и в небо шагали. Станем и ближе к ним станем. In a video set to a pop song, which has become for some Russians an anthem symbolic of military heroism during this conflict, airborne flags mark many of the fallen paratroopers. And looking at the names, we tick them off one by one against our own list of the regiment's fatalities. The price paid by this community is already far higher than during the longer-lasting Afghan and Chechen campaigns. The poster glimpsed during the Kostromar governor's visit in December insists everything will be fine. It was a chance also for Sitnikov to hand out welfare packages from home supplies, including a drone bought by donations, and underlined the Defence Ministry's failures. Huge thanks to the people of Kostroma for all their support, for not forgetting about us. Thanks to the Governor. We need your support no less than ammunition. Being here without it would be impossible. But look at this, the number of paratroopers filmed listening to Sitnikov during his visit is only around 30 in these shots. Many were on duty elsewhere, perhaps, but in the long struggle to gain an advantage at the front, the better assault units like the 331st have survived as small detachments to spearhead assaults. In the footage we saw at the beginning, the armoured group from the 331st, looking at the call signs on those filmed, appears to consist of just three BMD vehicles. The question of overall numbers in the regiment is not easy. We believe that the 331st entered Ukraine with two battalion groups. That would be something between 1,000 and 1,200 soldiers. They've had reinforcements since then and losses as well. But we think that the number who are continuing to serve is considerably smaller, probably around a third or even a quarter of that original total. But soldier on they do, 
and anyone who expected them either to mutiny or the people in Kostromar to demonstrate in support of them or in support of withdrawal would be disappointed. In that sense, they've shown their resilience. Back in Kostromar, families and those still serving in the garrison have emerged from the war as an embattled group, bonding together to celebrate things like Airborne Forces Day. They run apart from the rest of the community towards some vaguely defined finishing line. While Russian civilians might prefer to think about other things, the regiment and its families have to deal with the ugly reality of Vladimir Putin's long war.